how about that? We're back. Season 8 of the Vegas Golden Knights begins with a bang. And I mean this in a very positive sense, as the Golden Knights take care of business against the Colorado Avalanche on opening night at home by a final score of 8-4. to four. Now, you may be wondering, why do I look so fresh right now? And that's because this is the second time I've had to record this video. First time I tried to record it was last night, immediately after the game ended. It was about, I want to say about 12.45 at night. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try and record it fresh after so everything's fresh in my mind. And I was also going to use a different setup. I was going to use a different camera, some different lighting. And, well, you see the footage corrupted again because I'm a big dumb and forgot to save it the right way. Um, so I have to do this again. <laughs> um, so <laughs> apologies if this one's a little on the shorter side because I've already done this video once before. It just doesn't exist. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about the absolute thumping that was this 8-4 to four win to kick off Season 8. It couldn't have been a better way to start the season. I mean, the, the pregame festivities were good from what I saw on TV. And the gold carpet was good from what I saw on Twitter, albeit not as attended as it was last year when I was there in person. But again, that could have just been the camera shedding about 2,000 people like it did last year as well. So I have no frame of reference for how crowded the gold carpet was. But let's talk about what happened on ice. And amazingly enough, despite the final score, the Golden Knights got off to an absolutely up just abhorrent start. Just so bad. I think they were getting outshot 5-1 at one point. Sure, they came back later in the first period and kind of made it a game um, in terms of the shots before ultimately the seal was broken on the year. But they were getting outplayed. They are getting outshot. They are getting outhustled by an avalanche team that, in my mind, looked like they wanted it more. And that obviously came to fruition when the avalanche scored the first goal of this game. Miko Rantanen finds himself in the low mid slot with the puck and Nick Haig is, I think, off buying flowers because that's his guy and he missed him and ultimately wires it home under Aiden Hill's glove to put the Colorado Avalanche up one to nothing. Now, I was a little upset and I don't know why I was upset about it because Hill has been a little bit squishy this preseason, giving up, I believe it was six goals in his last preseason start against the Sharks. The less we say about that game, the better. This team's toxic trait, though, and I say this lovingly as a diehard fan of the Golden Knights, this team has a very toxic trait, and it's been this way for a couple of years now, even dating back to their Stanley Cup run, and it was really apparent um, in that series against the Oilers two years ago. The Golden Knights are really, really, really good at answering back really, really quickly, and if they don't answer back quickly, well, then it's going to be a long night, and mercifully for the Knights, mercifully for everybody in Team Mobile Arena, and thankfully for me at home on my couch, this was one of those nights where the Golden Knights were able to answer back quickly, as new Vegas Golden Knight, who originally was going to be on the first line, but slid down to the third line, which worked out swimmingly for him, Victor Olofsson, or should I call him Victor Golofsson, fires home a really sharp angle shot right past the ear of Alexander Georgiev in net for the Avs and ties the game up less than a minute after the Avalanche take the lead. And realistically, this kind of opened the floodgates for what would be a very, very, I don't even want to say chokehold, but just an absolute dominant end to the first period for the Golden Knights. While Petrangelo and Theodore would get assists on Olofsson's first goal in a golden jersey, they didn't really do much. This was all Olofsson and a really good shot. And all I have to say to that is we have more to talk about for Victor Olofsson. If you watch the game, you know exactly where I'm heading with this. But this was not the end of the good deeds by the Golden Knights in the first period. As later on in the first period, with about two-ish minutes to go in the period, Ivan Barbashev would find himself in the low slot on a pass. He'd be wide open and would just post a puck, low blocker side on Georgiev, and the building just goes absolutely nuclear at that point. Golden Knights are up two to one. And then less than half a minute later, Jack Eichel, Ivan Barbashev, and Mark Stone are on the rush. Barbashev feeds Eichel. Eichel feeds it across to Stone, who chips it blocker side on Georgiev. Two goals in the span of about 30 seconds. The Golden Knights have a 3-1 lead going into the first intermission. And nothing gets T-Mobile Arena bouncing more than a goal from the captain and two goals in quick succession against a conference rival like the Avalanche. So 
feelings are pretty good going into the first intermission. And honestly, at home on the couch, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm starting to understand the way this team is supposed to look. There, I mean, there's a lot of positives in the first period. Um, Hill looked okay. Georgiev did not look okay on the other side. That first line of Stone, Eichel, and Barbashev is working very well. And holy moly, Victor Olofsson can really shoot the puck. More on that in a minute. Unfortunately for the Golden Knights, they were not able to ride that hot start of the first period into the early portions of the second period, taking a really dumb penalty and ultimately going on to the penalty kill. And the Colorado Avalanche have a really good power play. That's all I have to say about that. And the Knights have a, I don't want to say a lackluster penalty kill, but because it's the first penalty kill of the year, but they had a tough time with the penalty kill in the preseason. And obviously it, um, it, Obviously, it carried over into the regular season. So Miko Rantanen would score on the power play, cutting the Golden Knights lead in half and making the game at 3-2. It was a good passing play. Rantanen found himself on the left side, and Hill just couldn't stop it. I'm pretty sure this one also went low glove side on him. But fear not. Remember that toxic trait that I told you about for this team? The ability to bounce back quickly after getting scored on? Minute and a half later, Zach Whitecloud finds himself in the high slot with the puck on a what looked like a broken play at the time. It just fires it on net and scores. Just, just, you just, you just threw it. Just threw it on net. Good things happen when you throw the puck on net. And I'm sure it was way more complicated than that. I was like half paying attention to this goal when it went in. I was stuffing my face with some nachos, you know, stress eating, because I was convinced that my team was going to blow this lead. Uh, but no, Golden Knights jump up 4-2 to two after the White Cloud goal. His first goal in forever, it feels like. He doesn't score a lot of many regular season goals. He's one of those players that you... If you don't see him on the stat sheet, it means something has gone incredibly well because he's done his job well. So seeing him get on the board early with a goal and be the first Golden Knights defenseman to light the lamp this year is very positive for what is going to be a very big year in Zach Whitecloud's career. I mean, I, I like the player. I think he's going to do well on that line, on that pair that he's with. And obviously he's off to a very good start. And the Golden Knights regain that two goal lead going up four to two. With the second period winding down, it looks like the Golden Knights are going to go into the dressing room with that 4-2 to lead that they established on the White Cloud goal. Unfortunately, the Avalanche had other ideas, and a shot from the point came down on Hill's low glove side again. This time, hits off like his thumb, kicks into his left, and Casey Middlestad is there to shovel home a wide-open rebound. Now, that's a good goal by Casey Middlestad. He's a big player for the Avalanche now after coming over in a trade last year. But at the same time, Hill... I yell this at the TV when I'm watching football. It hit him in a bad spot. It hit him in the hand. He should have caught it. It should have been in and out of the glove. It should have been in the glove. Should have stayed there. No problem. But alas, it did not. Wound up in the net. And it is now four to three. And that's, that's not great. Avalanche have a ton of momentum going into the latter portion of the second period. And I am convinced that the Knights will not get out of this period. Or they will at least be lucky to get out of this period only with a one goal lead. Fortunately for my psyche, fortunately for everybody in T-Mobile Arena, the, <laughs> the Avs would take a dumb penalty and the Golden Knights power play would get their first look of the 24-25 season. And this first unit, if they can keep this pace up, just the way they looked, regardless of outcome, the snapping it around, if they can keep this pace up, they're going to be a really good power play unit. Uh, this whole whole success of this power play was triggered by Kale McCarr basically looking like me on the golf course in college and chunking a simple wedge shot to clear the zone, turning it over, and luckily for the Avalanche, uh, or luckily for the Golden Knights, rather, the Avs would never touch the puck again on this, on this power play as the Knights would snap it around for about a minute and a half. And with less than 20 seconds to go in the period, the puck would find, guess who, Victor Olofsson, in the low slot again on the on on the goalie's left and he would just absolutely post it to the top corner again for his second goal of the game. He didn't score many goals last year in Buffalo. I think it was like 15 goals or something in 51 games and he was a late scratch. He's got two goals in one night in a Golden Knight sweater and he's clearly looking like he's worth every penny of that million dollar contract the Knights gave him to see if he's going to work out. So here I am thinking the Knights are going to be lucky to get into the intermission at four to three and I blink and it's five to three and somehow the Knights are one for one on the power play for the night. So we'll take it, right? Things are looking okay going into the second intermission. Stadium is electric as always. And if only they knew what was coming in the third period yet, they would be even more excited. 
but I guess we can now get to that third period because some really fun things happen. And now for a moment that actually made me get up out of my chair, get up off the couch and get really, really frustrated. If you've listened to the podcast that I do, the Wild Nights podcast, you will know that I have been very high on Pavel Dorofiev all preseason, especially after his hat trick in the last preseason game. He's looked okay through two periods to this point, and everything's going well. He's getting to the front of the net. He's doing the right things. And early in the third period, the Golden Knights are pressing near advantage. They're looking good, feeling good. They're feeling it. Puck comes out high to the point, finds Alex Petrangelo. Oh, and by the way, the Avs have switched goalies at this point. Um, and one of the first shots that this new goalie sees is an Alex Petrangelo twisted wrister that goes off the post and in. I jump up. I'm super excited. And then I look into the corner of the screen and I see that Dorofiev had smacked somebody in the face, drawn a high sticking penalty, literally about two nanoseconds before the puck went in. Uh, so yeah, that wiped the goal off the board. So what was six to three goes back to five to three, the avalanche go on the power play. And of course they wind up scoring. Miko Rantanen fires home a good passing play shot, basically a wide open net again, and completes his hat trick on opening night, becoming one of the first um, avalanche players to get an opening night hat trick. I think since like forever ago, I think they may have been the Nordiques still at that point. Um, so it's been a hot minute since an avalanche player has recorded a hat trick on opening night. And of course, what was almost a 6-3 game is now 5-4. to four. But then, but then, the bill kind of comes due for the Avalanche. They have gotten away with a lot of things to this point. A couple of iffy calls have gone against the Golden Knights and put them on penalty kills. And this one, mercifully for us, was not, was not marginal at all. A four-minute double minor for high sticking. And five seconds into the first power play of this double minor, Jack Eichel gets the puck high in the zone, sends it down. And I'm convinced this shot was going to go in on its own. Hits Mark Stone in the back of the hand goes in the net. Stone gets his second goal of the night. Eichel picks up, I think his fourth point or something. So I think I can start my case for Jack Eichel to win the Hart Trophy this year. Uh, assuming he can keep this up, he'll score eight, 16, like 300 points or something. Um, so that would be cool. It's not gonna happen, but it'd be cool. The important thing is the Knights have extended their lead to six to four and did it in a pretty quick fashion. Every single goal, that the Avalanche scored, all four of them, because this is the last goal, that, that power play goal is the last one they scored, the Golden Knights were able to answer back within three minutes of every single one of those goals being scored. So talk about bouncing back. This is textbook Bruce Cassidy hockey, which is great to see. Later on in the third period, uh, the game is kind of slowly getting out of hand. The Avalanche players aren't skating super hard. The Avs' top line is out there against the Knights' top line, and the puck just is hanging out in the neutral zone, and... Barbashev picks it up, gets around one guy, and honestly, this goal is probably a goal of the year candidate on opening night. He's out in the, he's out by the hash marks. He's on his backhand. He's got a defender draped all over him, and he just flicks his wrists and puts the puck in the top corner over the blocker on the backhand, gives the Golden Knights a 7-4 to four lead, and just hits an absolutely disrespectful Sally on them. Just goes to the boards. He He's even surprised that he did. Everybody on the bench was surprised. Everybody on the ice was shocked. And I literally opened my phone after seeing that goal scored, texted somebody I know and said, excuse me a second while I pick my jaw up off the floor because I have not seen a goal like that, that impressive since the last really good backhand goal I saw, which was two years ago, William Carlson spit a ram a backhander against the Senators. And the only reason I remember that goal is because I was in the building when that goal happened. It was one of the goals of the year for 2023. It was, it was awesome. It was just, it was awesome. Of course, Brett Howden adds on an empty netter and the final score is eight to four. Now, a couple of takeaways from this first game. Takeaway number one, and I didn't talk about them at all, but they looked really good. Fourth line. Fourth line, uh, Brett Howden, Keegan Colasar, Tanner Pearson. They were lined up against Colorado's top line a lot. And they weren't on the ice for any of the goals against that were scored by that top line because most of them were either on the power play or immediately at the end of a power play. So that fourth line's looking really good. Tanner Pearson can fly. Colasar's got some sneaky skill right now, and Brett Howden is Brett Howden. You know what to expect with them. So the fourth line's looking good. Uh, the impromptu second line without William Carlson also looks okay. I know they were held off the score sheet tonight, 
but Holtz, Hurdle, and Dorofiev, they were just getting tough matchups all night. They actually looked pretty good. Uh, they just didn't have a lot of space to operate. And so we'll, I'm curious to see how they're going to do um, in the next game. And we're just going to kind of see what they have. We're just going to see what they have. Stone, if he stays healthy, is going to have a monster year if he keeps this up. Barbashev's really good. And Victor Olofsson, man, that guy can shoot it. He can really shoot it. Um, and so if he can keep that up, this is going to look, this is going to make the Golden Knights look really, really smart for this offseason. I only have one critique for this game. Only one, well, actually, I have two critiques. One, stay out of the box because the Avs have really good power play and we should know better than the take down penalties. And two, and this is more of a personal attack on one player, Hill, buddy, you won the Stanley Cup, you got new gear, and I get it. But you looked like you were kind of lunging at the puck from time to time, having a hard time reading it. And we need to work on one thing in particular. This is your glove. You should have no problem with high glove, but you should have even less of a problem with low glove. Use gravity, drop the glove. And if anything goes in here, if anything goes in here, you should catch it. I, I mean, I'm not an NHL goalie and I can't even imagine how fast the puck is moving, but you would imagine that anything shot low glove side shouldn't be that much of a challenge for a goalie that is one, as good as Aiden Hill, and two, has as much experience in high pressure games as Hill does. But given that those are my only two gripes for the opening, for the opening night, I would consider this a mission success. So that being said, it's good to be on top of the Pacific Division. I'm pretty sure the Knights are on top of the Pacific as the Canucks lost, and I think they have the goals for tiebreaker over the Flames, and the Oilers got just demolished at home by the Jets, six to nothing. Oh my God. Um, so good start. Uh, hopefully the Knights are able to carry this into game two of the season coming up. I'm not entirely sure who they play. I think it's like Washington or something. Um, I haven't, I haven't even looked at the calendar. Um, but all in all, good start getting an eight, putting up an eight spot on a conference rival to open up the season is always a good feeling. And that being said, the one soundbite that I will take away from this game, which makes me feel really, really good about our team is after the game, Stone was interviewed on the bench in front of all of T-Mobile Arena. And he was asked, you know, how are you feeling about the game tonight? How's it feel to get that win? And he said something to the effect of, good, but we can't be giving up four every night. And that right there is what you need your captain to say after what was on paper a great game, but in practice, it could have been better. So positives all around, good news abound, stuff like that. So with that being said, <laughs> good way to start the year, eight to four win over the Avalanche. Uh, we'll be back for the next one in a couple of days against whoever it's against. I may just be completely forgetting who it's against. Uh, so thank you for watching. If you got to the end of the video, I appreciate that. Comment down below if you have an issue with my analysis of Aiden Hill's problems with glove side saves, or if you just want to yell at me for being a Knights fan in general. I get it. It kind of paints a target on my back. Uh, subscribe if you really enjoyed it. Tell all your friends. Welcome to Season 8 of Golden Knights Hockey. I could not be any more excited than I am.